Sometimes when I'm alone, I think about everything that leaves me on. I know she's waiting just for me. Patiently, patiently, patiently. My lady is one of a kind. A woman like her is hard to find. I must be lucky to tell myself she's something else, something. And I just can't believe she's taking my corner through the good and the bad. Life has given me love that I've never had. Oh, I think about oh how I love you, girl. All my life in my world Oh, how I love you, girl I'm so glad that you are mine Yeah One wish I'd wish for everyone to feel like this a love so strong said to stay each and every day, every day, and I just can't believe she's staying in my car. Oh, how I love you, girl You are my life in my world, baby Oh, how I love you, girl And I'm so glad that I'm so glad, so glad, so glad that you are mine Every day you are my life in my world Baby, baby, baby Oh, how I love you, girl I'm so glad Listen to me I feel your love, your warm embrace When I look into your eyes I can touch the sky Yeah Listen I want to hold you in my arms forever Listen Tell me that you'll leave me never Promise me you'll stay forever so glad, so glad, so glad, so glad, so glad, so glad that so so you are mine.
my woman, my world, my woman, my everything you like. Ever, ever, and ever, girl. Everybody, we are back. I'm your host, Deborah Coco, and I'm sitting here with the legendary D Train. That's what we're gonna say, James D Train. He joined us today, and we're so honored and happy to have you here. And thank you for the performance. Love, love your music, oh, you thank know. You. Thank you. And you know, let us know what's been going on. For those that don't have, you know, maybe need a little update. Give a little background on how you got started in the business and, you know, how long you've been. Give us a little information. Well, when I got started, uh, I was in Erasmus High School. I was a football player. Oh, wow. I was defensive tackle, captain of the football team. We won the city championship back in 1978. And go Dutchmen because they're playing at Yankee Stadium for the championship on Tuesday. Oh, wow. Here in Keep 2017. So, <laughs> hey, oh. no. my Dutchman. Right. Um, and uh, Will Downing and myself was in high school together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I graduated, and then Will was still there. I was in Brooklyn College, and Will started writing for um, Melba Moore and different people like Freddie Jackson. Wow. And um, he invited me into his studio because he was doing his song demos. And I went in the studio with him, and I met Hubert Eves, who was producing Will's song demos. He was producing a song called Real Deal. We won't talk about that, Will. We just won't talk about that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but, um, you know, and then Hubert and I met. And uh, he said, well, listen, man, if you can come over tomorrow uh, to my house, we can write this song. I got this track. I said, okay, cool. So I went to his house. He lived over there on Ralph Avenue in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And uh, get to the house, and he said, man, I got this chorus, but I ain't got no verses. I said, okay, well, play it for me. So he said, I'll stand up on the cloud and shout <laughs> out loud. Jordan yeah. won't be ah, you see. Right. So that's all I got, D. That's all I got. I said, okay, play it again, play it again. <laughs> so then I, I, you know, he started playing it again. I said, oh, with this new love I found, give me a piece Ooh. of pad. Give me a paper. Give me a paper. So we wrote You're the One for Me and Keep On in the same Isn't day. That something? In the same day. So you were into music. You was a football player that was Oh, yeah. Well, I grew up and, you know, I've been singing since I was six years old in okay. Washington Temple Church of God in Christ, where okay. I grew up. Ronnie Dyson was my choir director. Okay. And for those of you that don't know Ronnie Dyson, he was the one who had the song out, If You Let Me Make Love to You, Then Why Can I Touch You? <laughs> so, uh, and then Al Sharpton was my junior church minister. Yeah? Yeah, we called him Alfred. I still call him Alfred. Don't get mad at me, dog. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, and we were on the Bishop F.D. Washington and Madam Washington over there in Bergen and Bedford. In Brooklyn, I grew up there, and um, you know, nice. in a Christian lifestyle. And you know, when I told Pastor that I was getting ready to go out into the business, he was like, you know, a lot of folks when you're in the church, they say, "Oh, he's going out there in the wild." And yeah, the secular. Going, the, no, they say secular. No? You're going out there just to become a flat out sinner. Lord, Ooh, you're turning your back yeah, on God, yeah. son. And, there was really you know, no understanding around. Well, that what time, happened right? was I did try and pursue a gospel career first with Timothy Wright, okay, a uh, Reverend Timothy Wright, who was our musical director, who went on to do great things. Um, but um, you know, Hezekiah Walker, when he was like, I want to say, 12 years old, sang on my second album with oh. his. Choir, you know, I've known his since he was like nine years old. Oh wow! So it's like wow. Um, they sing on Children of, of the World. People around you growing oh, yeah. up, you know. Oh yeah, and you know, it was one for Donnie McClurkin and all of them came up in the same church, um, and it was interesting because as you grow older, you meet different people that have influenced your life right. in this music industry. And after we did You're the One for Me, it grew, and we wound up doing uh, Top of the Pops over in uh, Great Britain in 1982 with Sting oh, wow. and the Police when they had synchronicity. Wow. And it was funny because it was that day that I learned um, what Gladys Knight said to be true. 
you can never really judge an artist because you don't know what fame is until you've had it right. and lost it right. and then get it back again. Right. And that day when I was at Top of the Pop sitting in the studio, Elton John was in the green room. Oh, wow. And he's just sitting there. And this is before he came back out with the Marilyn Monroe song and everything. Uh -huh. So he's just sitting there and everybody's like, he's just washed up. That long Elton ago, John is that? washed up. And no I'm sitting way. up there going, I said... Nah, I think Elton got a little left in the tank, you know. Uh -huh. And he's just sitting there all cool in his room, waiting for Sting and him. And he came back out with the Marilyn Monroe stuff, and I'm still standing, and the rest is history. It, Elton's that's back it, on right. track doing it. That's so right, you never Elvis, discount Elvis. an artist, you know, saying they're 55 to 60, they can't sure. do it anymore. If they got the voice, to, uh, the chops to get back up on stage, because I just work with Billy, um, uh, Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis, oh, Songwriters okay. Hall of Fame, couple of months back and he could still hit that note no on way. I it's the worst that. thing that happened Ooh. to me oh remember them yeah he's that's saying that you know fifth too. dimension y'all fifth dimension right Would you like to fly in my beautiful balloon right. so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. but you know what happens is in today's society in this music industry oh. i think that what happens is a lot of our youth they need to study where they come from right. because i often say the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step you never know where you're going to unless you know where exactly. you come from I agree. um if you go to places like great britain and france and and uh, germany mm -hmm. i can get off a plane right now uh, in london and walk up to a 15 year old kid and said have you ever heard of d train have you ever heard of temptations Oh, yeah. Well, we, they will tell you where Eddie Kendricks did his last session. Overseas. And who right. was in the band, who was in the room. Just like when you were playing my video on YouTube, this brother's from Algeria. He had my ninth grade pictures on YouTube. Wow, wow. My mama ain't even got right. no pictures no more. Those right. were Polaroids. I'm sitting up there going, what they doing on YouTube? So why do you think that is so? Why do you because think overseas is so? Because they study our history uh -huh. and our analogy they, they focus on it more because everybody wants to do what we do over right. here. A lot of people emulate us. But you know what? My mother always said, be a first version of your, be always be a first rate version of yourself yes. instead of a second rate version of someone else. One of the things that I've learned right. in Great Britain is that a lot of their artists, they studied Motown. Mm -hmm. George Michael studied Motown. That's why George Michael became George Michael. That's right. Elton John studied Motown. That's why George, the Beatles studied Motown. So that is a missing element. I think that's a very good point. That well, well, You know, now we're getting back to it. But okay. then it turns into lawsuits because a lot of these kids just don't want to acknowledge, oh, well, I got that riff from the Gap Band. <laughs> well, yeah, I did borrow from, you know, the <laughs> SOS Band, but, you know, that was my lyric. Right. No, it but don't But did you pay a way. license and fee? No, but that's why you got sued. Yeah, exactly. You know, when you look yeah, at the Yeah, it was kind of rapid over too. the past couple of years. It's slowing down a little bit now, right? People it's are. It's like in the 90s on with. every hip hop record. What did you hear? Ah! Blend, right. James Brown. Yeah. James Brown was on every hip hop record in the 90s. Yeah. He was the most sampled artist in the 90s. True. He probably, his lawyers was on point. They were like, they had okay, to be. Yeah. They okay, had to be. Everybody was using them at they that point. They were on point. speed dial. You so know let's talk I mean? about you. How has. Your career, looking back on your career when you came out and where you are now, mm -hmm. like tell us about how you feel about your own journey. Is there some things you wanted to happen that didn't happen? Oh, absolutely. Some, okay, yeah, tell us about that. I think in the beginning of my, my career, you're kind of selfish. Mm -hmm. You want to be Prince. You want to be Michael Jackson. And your own ambition blinds you. You know, I was on the road. When my second album came out, I had two kids. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was never home. Wow. I was like a, a dad that came home every six months. Wow. Because you had to be on the road to support your That's where your, your money's record. at, right. And I, I figured like after my third album, Something's On Your Mind, I bought a timeshare in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. with Outdoor World. Mm -hmm. And I started staying home uh, more. I let go of my manager. I got dropped from Columbia Records after my second, uh, Columbia Records after my second album, okay. uh, In Your Eyes. And because the music was changing, it became New Jack Swing, uh, right. R&B artist. Teddy Riley, all yeah, that new and, wave and was coming R &B in. And R&B and hip hop merged. Yes, yes. Somewhere along the line. And R&B singers were no longer dressing up in nice clothing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Billy Eckstein was one of my teachers that gave mm -hmm. me a lesson and said, you know what, man? I like the way you dress. Always be that guy. Right. Because what happens is when you stop being that guy, then that guy in the audience has nobody to look up to. And, you know, always be somebody that they can look up to and emulate. And, and always, you know, personality is what you have when everybody else is in the room. Mm -hmm. That's your personality. Everybody may think you funny. Mm -hmm. 
You know, Bing Crosby had personality. You know, Henry Fonda had personality. <laughs> but then your character is who, what defines you when nobody else, when everybody's that's right. gone. That's right. That's your character. That's, that's the right. true you. And, and when these people die, you hear about them being child abusers and, and, and you know, pedophiles and carrying on. Right. And you're sitting up there going, what the? No, I used to watch all his movies. Right, right. <laughs> no, that, that's but true. It comes out years later. The character comes out, and then they can't defend themselves because they're dead. Right. What, what, what happens is, I think my mother took, gave me the greatest lesson when I was singing in church. I think I was about 12. She said, and I was doing all these riffs. And she said, and I was like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> she said, you sound like a fly buzzing around the room because <laughs> I wanted to be the gap band. Right. You right. know, I used to listen to Charlie Wilson and them guys, you know, at my grandmother's house down in North Carolina singing, you, you are my heart, spend all my day. Right, right. Yeah. And all those lonely nights. <laughs> and I want to be Charlie Wilson. My mother said, Boy, you just need to let Jesus sing. <laughs> it's like, all right, Ma. Right. She said, I don't understand a word you say. So, what happened was, I had to learn. She said, Close your eyes and let God use you. Right. And, and I think that there's a lot of singers out there that are better than me, that are greater than me, that have more finesse, that have a lot more going on for them. I think that not many of them have as much spirit. Right. That's because I can sing to you, but can I sing through you? Mm -hmm. So everybody can talk to you. So people look at you and talk. Mm -hmm. Are they talking at you or are they talking to you? Good point. Right. People look at you and sing. You can feel the difference. Are they singing to you or are they singing through you? Because mm -hmm. singing to you is entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Singing, t singing through you is spiritual. Sure. And what happens is when you sing through people, I don't need to know your story, but as long as you get what I'm saying and it funnels through your soul, you to when you leave this room, you left with me inside of you and right. I left with you inside of me. Right. That's and true. so that way when I die, I like that. you leave it all on the floor. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take nothing with you. When I come into a room, when I sing for an audience, whether I'm getting $5, whether I'm getting $50,000, you leave it all on the floor. Right. Right. Because that's all. some people that come to your concerts, that's all they got. That is you. Right. You're their hope. Right. Some I, I've had people come to my shows wanting to commit suicide. Wow. They hear keep on and it changed their mind. Right. And 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 they went out and got a job. And I I, I know like when I was at Sirius Satellite Radio where I had a radio show for like eight years, mm -hmm. I was getting a lot of mail from prison from Fishkill, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and put you know Danamora, yeah, Comstock, you know and them. brothers were writing me telling me, man, you know, I got to do 15 years, and I'm doing this bid, man, and because I caught a body. Mm. But, you know, because Keep On has kept me here in my cell, I realized why the Caged Bird Sings is, in, is more than just a book. Wow. wow. You know. Um, you just never know how you, you never know. somebody's life. And see, what right. happens is, having gone through that myself, I said, you know what? God put you in certain situations to where it might seem like adversity at the time. Mm-hmm. And people get mad. Oh, man, why this happened to me? Yeah, why this happened to me? Right. You know. So, you know, if he'll take you to it, he'll take you through it. Right, right. Yeah. So what do you have coming up right now? I know you have some new things. Well, you know, Not I got a Christmas concert. Christmas but... concerts at Purchase, New York. Mm -hmm. Working on a new album coming out in 2018. Nice. Going to be called The Other Side of the Tracks. All right. So look for it. Look for that. Yeah. Right. And that's it. I, I wish all you guys a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Love life and always remember that the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. I definitely appreciate you coming today and sharing your story. I wish we had more time oh. to get more into it. Yeah. But again, look out for the new music coming out in 2018. Yeah. And when is the event again? What's the date? Uh, December 16th, 15th, 16th at uh, Purchase College okay. with Rob Mathis Christmas concert December 17th at 3 p.m. Uh, Pace University okay. downtown at the Schimmel Center with Rob Mathis. All right. And sometimes Vanessa Williams stops by. She stops by. Yeah. So special She's been doing it for a couple building. of years. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. It was an honor meeting you today. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, you know? And uh, we'll be back with you, everybody. Thank you for your support. Look out for that new